explaining data analytics using Microsoft Excel. Yesterday, we had understood what is data analytics. We had um, spoken about <clears throat> what is Microsoft Excel, how to install it. I had shared the links using which you can install the tool on your machine, right? If you do not want to install Office 365, you can go ahead and install, and install even uh, the other alternative tool that we have, which is WPS Office. Anything is fine. You can use one of it to practice the concepts. Now, um, what exactly we did yesterday was we just got familiar with the tool, with the nomenclature, etc. right? We just, um, I introduced you to the concept that we have a home page where uh, we can choose the blank worksheet to start off with our work. This is the Excel spreadsheet. Excel is basically a spreadsheet application where you will see a lot of columns, A, B, C, D, E, these are columns. And these are rows, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, are the rows. And every cell here, each block that you see is a cell and each cell has its own address. So this particular block's address would be G7. Why? Because it is in column G and the row seven. So a cell is basically an intersection of the row and the column. Okay, then we talked about the big five, right? Those five basic functions, which everybody is supposed to be familiar with. What, what are they? One is sum, the other is average, the min function, the max function, and the count function. Okay, so this is what we had done yesterday. We will um, do a quick recap on these things, and then we shall proceed, okay? All right, so here I have some data with me and this is uh, the employee details, okay, of 360 digit MG. Now we have some questions that we are supposed to answer. So we have the employee ID, name of the employee, salary, sa sales amount. So let's say this is the salesperson and the sales that they made. Now we need to get the total salary. So what does it mean? I need to get the summation of the data in the salary column. So as we learned this yesterday, it's pretty simple and straightforward. We can use the sum function of the entire data present in this range. So the range begins at C5, it ends at C10. So the complete range you can see there. This is the total sum of salary. Now, if we have to find out the average, of the salary. On an average, what is the salaries that we are giving to our employees? Average of the data in this particular range will give us the value. What is the highest salary being offered? We will use the max function, maximum of the data in this range. And we need to find out what is the minimum salary. So that would be the min, minimum of the data in this particular range. So maximum is 2000, minimum is 1500, uh, 1500, summation is 10,200 and the average is 1700. Now we need to find out the count. So that will be the count function. Okay, count of the number of records that are there in that range. Okay, this is the range that we are looking at, total six. So far it is all good. Now we have been asked to find out the commission. The commission rate is 2% of sales. Whatever is the sales that the salesperson makes, they will receive 2% commission on that. Okay, so how do we do this? We can use simply multiply. Okay, use the operator, the multiplication sign. So equal to whatever is the data that is present in the sales amount multiplied by 2%. As simple as that, multiplication. Whatever is the sales that they have made, multiplied by 2% would be the commission that they will receive, that the person would receive. So 2% of the sales will be given as the commission, which is 50 here. Now, I, we need not type in that formula every time. Okay, here also I have to com compute 2% of the sales amount. 
Here also, I need to show 2% of this amount. So in that case, we don't have to retype this formula. This is the formula, right? Which we can see on the formula bar. We don't have to retype. Then what to do? Simply, I will go to this corner here. This corner, you can see like a square dot right over there. And when I double click on it, it will copy the formula down. Okay. You can either go there and hold the handle and drag it down. So the same formula will get applied to all those records or we can simply double click on this handle and the formula will get copied down. Okay. Now, if you see this is D2 multiplied by 2%, right? This would be D6 multiplied by 2%. Look at the formula there. D6 multiplied by 2%. Why so? That is because Excel automatically performs something called as relative referencing. Okay. So there's a new term that we are looking at here. New concept. Relative referencing. <clears throat> okay. So the moment I double click here, it copied down the formula, but it is not doing D5 multiplied by 2% everywhere. It has automatically shifted the reference to this cell. Look at that, D6 multiplied by 2%. What about this? It would be D9 multiplied by 2%. So why is the reference to the cell getting updated automatically as we move down? The row number is getting updated automatically as we move down. The cell reference that happens by default in Tableau is called relative referencing. Hence, it worked. Okay, see so here what happened is the 2% of commission that we are talking about has been hard coded. In the formula, I have hard coded 2%. So if someone has to change that, let's say tomorrow we decide to give 3% as the commission, then we'll have to go and edit it over here. So rather than doing like that, we can actually store the commission percentage as a separate value. So let's say commission percent, I would like to store it as a separate value over here in H5. Okay, so it is for now 3% or let's keep it as 2%. Initially, I want it to be 2%. This is the commission value, 2%. All right. So I need to refer to this rather than hard coding 2%, whatever is the percentage that will be given by the users over here, I will have to refer to this and then accordingly compute the percentage. So what will I do is rather than doing a multiplication with 2%, I will multiply the sales amount with the value that is present in this particular cell. Okay, we are removing the hard coding part and we are making it reference another value present in another cell and multiply it with that. So the sales amount in D5 will be multiplied with the commission rate which is given in H5 and the product would be the commission amount which will come in this particular cell where I've typed in the formula. Okay, I hope you all got this. So now when I click on the enter key, you will see how it has computed 50%. And if I copy it down, how do I copy it down? By doing a double click on this handle. The rest of them are all giving zero. Why are they all giving zero? Let's see. Let's see what Tableau did here. What did it do? What is the formula it has used here? It is doing relative referencing. So when we copy the formula down, when we move down to the sixth row, where the sales amount is 3000 D6, even the commission rate has relative referencing by default, right? So this also has moved down. Now it is referencing H6 and we do not have any data in H6. What about this? Let's see. Here D8 and it's refer referencing H8. <clears throat> okay. Which is not correct. There is no value given in H8 and therefore it is zero. The commission itself has become zero. Similarly, if I check here, what happened? D10. So I'm very happy that it is picking up D10. That is what we wanted, right? We have to compute the commission given to this particular salary. So D10 is perfectly fine. But the rate, the percentage commission rate is present in H5, not in H10. Over here, relative reference is fine. With respect to sales amount, it must perform relative referencing, which Excel does by default. 
But when we are talking about the commission rate, it can't be, it is not supposed to be relative referencing. It has to refer to one particular cell at any given point of time. It must always refer to this particular cell and not move. It is not relative to something. It is an absolute reference that we are supposed to make. Okay, so relative referencing might not help all the time. Sometimes we use something called as absolute referencing. Okay, now what is absolute referencing? I hope you all understood relative referencing, how the reference to the cell will keep changing depending on which row and which column we are in. Whereas absolute referencing is used when you have to lock in a cell. At any given point of time, if I have to refer to that particular cell, no matter what, I have to lock in that cell, then we use something called as absolute referencing. So how do we do that? H5 is supposed to be made absolute. I need to lock that value in place. So while the mouse pointer is here on H5, you can see that it is on H5, right? Blinking near H5. I will just press down the F4 function key. Okay, F4 function key. So when we press down the F4 function key, what happens is you can notice how before the column reference, there is a dollar sign. And before the row reference also, there is a dollar sign that we can see. Means this is referring to this particular cell at any given point of time. Okay, we have logged it in place. This has been locked in place. The reference has been made absolute. Now over here, while uh, this is selected, if I go ahead and press the function key again, you can see the column reference is relative, but the row reference is logged. Only the row has been logged, dollar sign before the row number. Again, if I do F4, the row is relative, but the column is logged as H. You can see the dollar sign before H. And if I do F4 again, it just goes back to H5, which will become relative referencing. Now, again, I will go and hit F4. This is how you lock it in place. Okay, so here we need the, the cell itself to be absolute. Both column and uh, row are locked, referencing to a particular cell. So this is going to help me, and this is called absolute referencing.